Hi all, welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro and our video user guide for APT. Last night I got a couple of hours of semi-clear skies. It was a time that was useless for imaging with clouds blowing over and very high thin cloud affecting things along with uh, autofocus aid was useless, it was getting all over the place. But it did allow me to do a couple of things that really require a live session to be able to show how they work properly. And one of them is the button of aid. Um, button of masks are probably one of the best ways to get spot on focus. Uh, because it's a mechanical device, it makes it easier to get right in um, and get the focus right. Unlike relying on software to do it for you. Uh, software will consider you know, what your critical focus zone is and everything else and get as close as it can but I don't think it can be as accurate as using a button of mask. The only problem is no one has yet developed an automatic button of mask to go up and down when you need it so it's not really good if you're automating your system. But it is a very very accurate way to get on focus. So enough of that said. Um, I've just a thought I've had today was uh, maybe there is a way to use your button of aid as a uh, reference to see how sky conditions are changing um, and what sort of turbulence you're getting in the atmosphere. I was just thinking if you sat there and watched the uh, figures jump around when you get right on focus and maybe that can tell you how much your atmosphere is interfering with things. Just an idea, there might be a way to uh, record the uh, results and measure them and let you know about how much it's moving around. Something for the future to think about. But I'm just going to let this video go now and hope you uh, find this useful. So here we go. Okay, so here I am in APT. I've selected a star. In this case, it's Alfred. Um, something around the magnitude two or three are often quite good stars to use. You don't want anything that's too bright. Otherwise, you've got to do a bit of mucking around uh, to get it right for the so it's not over uh, bright and affecting your button of my aid. So. What I do here is you select your star. Um, you really need to be in one-to-one -one mode. So if you're in the fit mode like I am at the moment, simply double click on the star. And that's what I've got here. Now I'm going to use live view for this. So I'm just going to hit the live view button, which is taking about one second images. And there we go. It's off and running. So for Barton of Aid, go to your tools tab. Uh, select the Barton of Aid from there. And this is what you get. And what you need to do is take this uh, box, drag it up, and place it about over the center of the selected star. And then hit the recalc button. Now what it does, as you can see, it says I'm well off. Uh, this top box on the right hand side is how close these circles are. It's a sort of a zoom in on that. And same with the lines, that's the lines crossing. And you can see it's a long way off. Um, but for Barton of Aid to work properly, make sure you've got your focal length and diameter set correctly and your information for your camera sensor. Uh, except for the uh, focal length and scope diameter, all the rest should probably be automatically filled in by APT anyway. <coughs> Pardon me. Now go into the gear tab um, and I'm going to have to adjust my focuser of course, do it manually and I'm not sure which way I need to move. Well, I am because I've done this before. Uh, but it does change with the orientation of your focus, of your button of mask. Uh, the arrows will be, in, the circles will be in different directions. So um, I'm pretty sure I know which way to go because I set mine up pretty much all the time like that. Um, I'm gonna do this in 50, uh, 50 steps at a time for now. So I'm just gonna move in 50 steps and see if that's in the right direction. Well, obviously it is because I'm now down to four. So I'm going to move it another 50 steps and just gradually work it in. So 2.85, yeah, that's better. Uh, I usually let it go for a couple of images because the wheel might still be moving in between. Uh, so I'm getting closer, 1.95, maybe one more. Or 0.83. Oh. I mean, technically, I could stop there, um, but uh, I might do a 25-step move this time. 
and see how that's going. 0.43, I'm getting there, getting there, but I'm still not where I want to be. Um, I might do another 25 steps. Okay, 0.34, and just watch it as it goes. Okay, I've probably gone a, only a couple of steps too far. Um, it's close. What you really want, because of the changing sky conditions, if you can get it between images sort of going from a negative to a positive back to a negative that are pretty close, um, this isn't too bad. I could actually stop right here, but I want to get it closer. So now I'm going to have to go out a couple of steps. Um, I might try five steps, but due to my uh, final inward move I use at the moment, it's going to take uh, me all the way out and then all the way back in. So just give it a second. As you can see, it's gone way out. And as it's come back, now I let it set. That's almost there. Um, as you can see, it's not really flipping side to side. I could stop there. Oh, there goes a flip over. Maybe it could be a bit better. Um, so I'm going to try... Where am I going to go this time? I might do another five steps. Might be too much, but five steps out again. And we'll see how that does. Yeah, that's looking quite good. I've probably gone just a fraction too far. I could probably come in one or two, but there's really no need to at the moment. Um, just have a bit of a play, I think I might. And one. We'll come in one step. I mean, it's not going to make much difference doing one or two steps at a time. It's still mostly on the negative side. I mean, it depends how pedantic you want to be. Um, close means you're inside your critical focus zone. So, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, minus 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. I mean, I'm happy with that. That's going a little bit each side. So that's yeah about what you want. Um, uh, one more step. Let's do it. Let's do one more step and see what happens. Yeah, no, that's yeah. Well, that's pretty much spot on now. And as you can see, the circles up here are showing you almost sitting directly right on top of each other, and the line for the green line is straight between the cross on the other two. And it's only changing atmospheric conditions that are going to do any different there. Now, like I said, you don't want your star too bright. Um, you want one-to-one -one preview. If you're using a Canon DSLR, uh, use live view with a five-time zoom on it. That brings it up to about the one-to-one -one size. And on a Nikon, a bit under 100% zoom uh, to get it in your live view to be the right size. And that's all there is to it. Um, once it's done, you can simply uh, close it. It'll remind you to take your uh, Bartonov mask off. And uh, it's drifting out a little bit. Yeah. Nah, it'll do. I'm just going to blame that on the weather conditions. <laughs> See, it's going up the other way now. Uh, I've got very poor sky conditions tonight. I wasn't expecting to get out and be able to do this for you, but I've got a couple of hours maybe with not a lot of clouds. So that's it for the Bartonov mask. Uh, once you're done, like I said, just simply click closed. It'll remind you to remove your mask. Click OK. Turn off live view. And I'm done. So I'm happy with that. Uh, it was a very good final one. Uh, 4508. Not too bad. So I'll leave you all now. Wishes all clear skies. And I will see you in another video soon. Take care, everyone.